It is um, Marta the 11th of Aeroch. And uh, we start somewhere peculiar. Um, departing the docks of uh, Port Town on the west coast of Albion. Hmm. And uh, as I understand it, let's see, Jay, uh, I'm sorry, Flanagan is the group caller tonight. Um, I think that you took fewer mercenaries this time. Is that is that right? Uh, I think you're all going to have to tell me what happened last time because... Uh, yeah. Did you? Yeah. We took. We took. We only took half uh, as many. Okay. Thank you, heretic. I will uh, remove half. So, um, actually, let's do a recap. I'll. I'll, I'll just do it. So, last session, um, what they decided to do first, they tried to wait for a kill boat. Uh, unfortunately. Um, no kill boat arrived for a week. And so uh, some of them, <laughs> with no treasure and sleeping in, in the straw at the stable, were like, we, we've got to try to do something. Um, and, um, of course, you also are going to lose the trail. You're going to lose the trail of these people you're trying to track down. <laughs> so they make the decision to end game session journey to Western Albion. So they start traveling overland via the river, uh, the uh, Loch Ness in the, uh, um, the north of Albion to the west. And along the way, they have all sorts of weird adventures, which we won't go into the specifics of. Uh, one of them is outright murdered by a horrible monster in the night. And then they, they bring vengeance on that monster and steal its treasure and return home. So they come home um, and use the time in between to travel to Port Town uh, because you want to purchase a kill boat, which I think we've worked out the expenses in the chat, everybody that's buying into the kill boat. Um, and you have done that now. So we won't, we won't play through that. You go to Port Town, you purchase a kill boat, and you're on the on a river, and uh, you were headed east, and um, I need to uh, simply take a look, quick look at the map. Um, so you start sailing, uh, becomes the 11th of Marta. It's cold, windy, partly cloudy outside. Uh, but when I say cold, I mean not cold for Northern Albion. 41 in the day, 24 at night. So what is that? Five, seven, six, seven degrees Celsius during the day and minus, you know, three or four at night. Um, and, um. You, uh, uh, you, Sorry, be I'll be right back. I apologize. Yeah, no problem. Um, you begin sailing back to the east. Um, and, uh, the good news is that the current is with you. Uh, after, after you reach, um, kind of the midpoint and you're sailing south of the forest of hope. So, um, And I just have to see, with that, what you encounter on the river. Yay. Okay. So as you're doing that, everybody, this town, Port Town is where in relation to Zelcor's Ferry? 
east of oh. it's far to the west of Zilkor's Ferry. It's upriver. To the west? I believe so, yes. Like inland. <laughs> yeah, I believe so. Okay. That's what I remember. <laughs> yeah, if you go if you go outland, you just wind up in like the Rapana Thok region, which has no yeah. no nothing good places to shop. So right. We must okay. be going east, westland. Oh, you're yeah. inland. Okay, wow. Okay, that's cool. Isn't that where Fingon is from? The the owner of uh, Inchberry is is he the lord out there in Port Town? I, I'm confused about Fingon. <laughs> I don't know. Is that where he's from? I know he's from the west. I, I always imagined he was even further west, but maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, no. So <laughs> Port Town is uh, essentially you might think of it as almost like the western component. So Caden's Rest sits on the east coast, but inland of the river about 60 miles. So actually, I suppose it's inland a ways because it's on the river. But it sits kind of, fa you all have been adventuring to the east and southeast, okay? Um, Port Town is on the west coast, uh, but bordering the, the, the northern reaches of Albion, um, just like how Caden's Rest does. Well, it's and, on the other side of the island of the entire... Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's where you all did the two. You did two expeditions to the Tower of Xenopus. Um, wow, all those warlords are from there. Okay, so uh, Algar, roll a d6. Oh boy, this just keeps on happening. Right into it. <laughs> now I have Rumple up here, okay, but you know it's not Rumple, obviously. But I don't have the. Forgive me, I don't have the token. I have the same. Okay. We rolled a three. So we're good. <laughs> Barring unusual circumstances. Algar, um, as you're sailing along the river, you see um, that there is a, a, a collection of dead brush, uh, and something is off about it. It's a bit too high and a bit too deep. And as the, uh, the, the, kill, the steersman of the kill boat starts to steer toward the shore... You, you can tell that something very large has, has moved trees and brush to block the river to funnel you into a narrow point. And um, then you start to hear cracking noises behind you in the forest, in the river behind you. Oh, fantastic. Well, obviously, I tell everyone else about this. One that we should expect to be sailed with an ambush almost immediately. Yeah, this has been about three days of journeying on the river, uh, but uh, it's as you start seeing the familiar, dense, hoary forest of hope again that uh, that this happens. And um, yeah, you mentioned I, the larger than human figure. Or that, um, like that something only something very large could have. It basically looks like something has taken trees. And place them down to try to funnel you into a narrow point uh, where the the river um, rushes past the trees. It try to tries to push you in toward the bank. Hmm. Uh, let me draw. It looks like this. No, I get the idea. They sort of it narrows the river to like a specific spot. Yeah. Where like the water can go, but a boat can't. Now my concern is, if I was doing this, I would also set up sharp rocks under the water to catch boats as they flew by, so that we would not just be pushed up against the river, but immobilized and perhaps damaged. So do I see any sign of that? It does. It looks like uh, place, uh, things have been placed all in the water, uh, and that you're, the, uh, the current is bringing you up upon it rapidly. Well, uh... What sort of motive power do we have again? Uh, like, do we have oarsmen? Do we could, have like poles? Yeah, you do have oars. You can uh, you can turn against the current if you if you tried. I think it seems to me that this is a good time to do that, and perhaps for us to take the initiative in clearing this journey, in clearing this path of evildoers. 
yeah, let's he heave to the side with poles, like just start um, shouting to the mercenaries in the boat. Um, push to the side, push to the side, and just like everybody's like pushing to get to the to the <laughs> edge before we hit this um, this bottleneck. Um, you're able to make this uh, this quick, deft decision uh, to try to you know push the boat away since Algar catches it. Um, and so fortunately, you only have to deal with, in the next few moments, the things that you start to see behind you, Algar, which is trees that are being failed to, uh, to block an escape. Um, and the banks oh fill God. up with these, uh, these things and stuff start to rise up out of the water. And, uh, then clouds start to swirl overhead. And you hear, uh, the crack of lightning and I think this is um yeah you can uh let's see Flanagan you can uh, well anyway anyone can declare spells okay um as caller I'm gonna um, can we just uh confirm what's happening here so you've just laid this out on the map here can we imagine that we're on a barge like this is uh yeah are they all on one side like the way you've laid these counters is that what we're looking at spatially yeah so let me in yeah let me kind of like so like here's the river and um uh you all are all on a boat and wait why is it not oh i'm on the gm layer there we go and you're all on a boat and you were headed this way um, okay. and then they, they completely, they're just like swarms of these things in the water that rise up like stones. And then they push trees down on either side of the bank, uh, to try to surround you, to keep you from fleeing. Mm. Okay. Um, you, you suspect that well ahead of you, probably four or 500 feet ahead is something similar, you know, that they're trying to trap you. And, and this, these clouds that are the mist and everything, there's some clearly something unnatural happening. Like magic. That would be mm -hmm. obvious to you. Um, to Magnus, it's obvious that someone is casting a spell above you. Okay. So before we declare spells and all that, um, let's talk about, uh, like, does this look really deadly to you guys? <laughs> yes. This is, yes, yes. Like, this is a winnable fight, but not easily. <laughs> yeah. And at great yeah. cost. I mean, we usually, like, so maybe we should think about how to, how to, how to deal with this, because... Um, like for you've got um, sticks to snakes and web are go tos, right? Mm -hmm. And that's uh, like I don't know how sticks to snakes is going to work in the water. And web, um, even if it works in the water, what's the space that we have between these guys? Um, like web, I think that's I got a question. few of them. I have yeah. the horn of blasting, which will I think at least blow a lot, like disrupt their formation, possibly break their morale. But it's not that effective at destroying uh, infantry. It's primarily designed to destroy fortifications. Or it can which, blow, which uh, is in front of us. Opening. Yes, you're right. We can blow an opening ahead of us. Right. Down, Kurt, downstream, so we can keep going. Yeah, that's yeah a good we, idea. Can just, we can kite them. We'll just yeah. kite them. Yeah, I mean, if, like, if, if we lose the running. boat, it's going to be a very long trip. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to be screwed. And we just yeah. spent a lot of money on this boat. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's a part of me that wants wants uh, Magnus to fly up. Are you there, by the way, Chris? Are you still away? I think he's still away. We may want to give him a moment. Yeah. There's a part of me that wants Magnus to fly up in the air and do some wizard on wizard action. That would that be thing. cool, but yeah. it could also end in tremendous tragedy. No, and uh, I'm not inclined to volunteer Chris for that. Uh, That's the sort of thing I do, and <laughs> my track record with that isn't amazing. Yeah. This is the guy that we're we keep running into, right? This is this is troll wizard. Yeah, what's his <laughs> face? Uh, fucking God, this guy was a torment to my other PCs as well. Uh, I can't remember his name just as well. Um, Berlain, yeah, that's him. I'm sorry, I'm back. Welcome okay. back. So, did you catch? What did you? Where did you leave, Chris Magnus? Almost at the very beginning. Uh. <laughs> Okay. May, well, may I? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So, in front of us, they are building a trap to catch the boat such that we will run aground on it against the near the uh, edge of the, the water. Behind us, they were hiding in the water and are felling trees so that we cannot go backwards. 
ahead of us something similar. Lots of trolls. An unreasonable quantity of trolls, in all sincerity. Terlane is probably around here somewhere because someone is in the sky casting a spell. The clouds are swirling oddly. Uh, we are in a real pickle. However, we have um, come to a couple conclusions. One, we have the yeah. Horn of Blasting, so we can probably punch our way through the fort. Two, uh... uh I, I, I see the floor. Okay. Um, so the, the wizard that you've been up against is probably here, and we're thinking this isn't just going to be a normal fight. Like, we should probably use the Horn of Blasting and try to get out of here. And Heretic's saying, like, basically kite them. Like, let's get... We want to keep stay on the boat. Um, they kind of made like some deadfalls and like blockades up in front of us. So who won initiative? They haven't rolled yet. We're declaring spells first, yeah. But they're making a play oh. in as part of that. Can I see this guy flying? You cannot. You just see a miasma of energy and light up above the ship, about you know fifty feet above the ship. Um, one other thing, because because we think we need every resource we can we can muster right now. Um, if you don't mind, uh, what's the situation with this, uh, Snaggletooth, the, dra the fairy dragon? Well, unfortunately, um, because we agreed to it? stick to our conventions, he's, the yeah. fairy dragon's not going to be released for another couple of weeks. What? Are we still, is it, okay, that's cool. I think so. Yeah, Didn't I put that in the idea. chat? I think it says that. That was a couple of weeks ago. Like you said, so it was going to be done. Uh, well, that's a good point. Uh, that's a good point. We are one for one time, and we skipped a week. Uh, touche. <laughs> However, to we're played. Was, can, the counterpoint is he was being like released from his gym <laughs> back in Delcor's yeah, Ferry. Yeah, right. So, let's, let's, yeah, he'll say he's not here. That simplifies it. Um, it okay. I, I also have something here that I've been holding on to for a while. It's called the Flute of Confusion. <laughs> <laughs> Use everything you can, man. Make sure that, that we don't have to hear the flute, though. I mean, this is the time to blow our blow what we got, because this is like a major ambush with four times as much as we've ever faced, and we're on a boat. But we're on a boat that's moving, right? Like, towards uh, a bunch of deadfalls, oh. and uh, probably stuff under the water that's going to catch our boat, too. There's, and they're behind and in front of us. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we use the horn of blasting on the deadfalls and blast yeah. them out of the water. Is that the idea? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just looking up confusion real quick. While you do that, get, you know, help me kind of get in a sense of what the rules would say about casting confusion on something that you can't see. I'm, I'm thinking... I'm, I'm talking about casting it on the trolls. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that gone, that gone this new... Anyway... 50 feet behind us and 400 feet in front of us? So yeah. Us? Yeah, so there's like probably okay. several hundred feet, you know, between you and the, the trolls ahead because uh, you all made that decision to kind of steer away and hold back from it. And then the one behind you is closer. Yeah. Okay. So we got to worry about either like breaking away from this rear group before we could even worry about the forward group then. Yeah, so. I mean, spellcasters do whatever you can, and I think the Horn of Blasting, whatever the range is on that, we should figure that out, too. Well, can, can we even do that this round? Well, I was carrying the horn last I checked, so I should still have it at hand-ish. But I, I mean, pull up the notes. range -wise, it's 400 feet it's away to the thing. It's equivalent to a catapult, I believe. So it's, it, I, I don't think we can break it now because we're too far away, but like on the way. Yeah. yeah, so that might be next round or something. Horn of Blasting... Is a hundred feet long, so we have to wait. That's fine. Hundred feet is plenty of range. Yeah, yeah. Just, okay. just clarifying that here. Not yet. I, I'm gonna. Oh, uh, good lord! Sleep is not, is basically useless against these things unless they're like they're more than six hit dice a piece, aren't they? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, trolls are. Um, I think they're six. Uh, let me see here. I think uh, sleep is four hit dice max, isn't it? Yeah. Um, well, what kind of uh, equipment do we see them wearing, wielding? Uh, they don't seem to have any equipment. I am casting 
I am blowing the horn of confusion. The the. No, the flute of confusion. Flute of confusion. You're gonna start playing the flute. Okay. Now. How does that work? I think you've had. Uh, I think you've had time to study it. My reading is that it's possible you will actually confuse your allies. It's possible. The spell confusion. Well, anyway. I don't know. It affects 2d6 creatures. Creatures of three hit dice or fewer are automatically affected. So I guess oh, unless you're saying I'm sorry. Can't, like, no, can't. no, I, I'm misunderstanding. I apologize. Of course, it, it, it creates a random. It, make, it makes them do something random. Yeah, and yeah, and it affects uh, 2d6 creatures and let's see. Automatically overcome the confusion effect as it builds up to its full power. So it takes d12 minutes minus the caster's level. Build up to its full power. Yeah. But that's if they... Oh yeah, they automatically overcome it. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a lot of combat rounds. Yep. Well... Yeah, I'm, I'm going to cast uh, sticks, stand, yeah, sticks to Snakes. I will right. say that they can swim. Um, are there any that are on the ground, on the land? Yes. <laughs> Alright. Then, web. Um, I would imagine you can cast web in such a way that you could affect them in the water, if, if, if it's your goal. But you could also do it, you know, on, on land. Because there's all kinds yeah. of deadfall and stuff, you know, so you have a lot okay. of stuff to work with. It, it Just a you know, in case that's something you want, just to let you know. They might uh, they might drown too if you cast on the ones in the water. Are they higher than the water? Are they like, that's a good point. I think they were hiding in the water though. So, yeah. Oh. They look like big lumps, you know, coming up out of the water, but you can see, you know, okay, who they are. Dang it, man. this sucks. This is just going to be an yeah. abstraction. The snakes here, but you can. You know, keep track of how many you have and how many are poisonous. Just let me know. Okay, so right, let's... I'll roll that now just to get it out of the way. Yeah, and then let's go ahead and make a decision here. So we're going to... The, the plan is, Flanagan, Horn of Blasting on the deadfall in front. Is that right? Yeah, Dude. but we have to be 100 feet away, so we're not there yet. Okay. Um, I think that uh, I'd like to suggest that, that we get the mercenaries, we pull and row and go as fast as you can. Like, let's prioritize speed forward. To outrun the ones behind us, um, rather than them catching up, we do not want them to catch up with us. All but, right. Um, all the mercenaries to like f as hard as you can. Everybody, get your get get on deck and and push, push, push. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. You the list down in the back and fend off any that catch up. Gotcha. I'll say do we, that. Do we want the? Do we? I'm sorry. Do we want the mercenaries firing arrows at the ones behind us? Well, I don't know. If we're doing that, then we might be moving slow. Like I'd rather be prioritizing speed. Uh -huh. Getting out of here, then moving slowly. That's my thought. I mean, I think with it with these, how many mercenaries do we have? Sixteen. Let me frame Let frame your options for you. So, um, you're right. Okay, so you could have everybody row. Everybody gets on a, on an oar, and I'll just say that by the next round, you'll be within range for the horn of blasting to try to to try to use it. Um, alternately, like th that being said, the the characters can all act, including with your spells. But um, none of the mercenaries can fire or defend. They'll all be on the oars to do that. I'd rather do that, um, Heretic, if you're okay with that. Like, let's yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay. Cool. So they're all going, and we're all we're in the back, casting spells, uh, firing arrows, or whatever we're going to do in our combat round, I guess. All right, Magnus, the moment of truth. What are you going to do? What's your spell? Or do you want to cast a spell? <clears throat> My spell is fly. Okay. You cast fly. All right. Um... We'll Spells declared, wizard, actions done. All right. Uh, immediately, you see uh, Magnus beginning to prepare a spell. He starts to lift off, you know, and you issue these commands. Everyone starts screaming, uh, you know, and these things start coming up out of the water. And um, all of the mercenaries rush to get onto the the oars, and and uh, you see him slipping and sliding on the deck and slamming onto the the deck and getting back up and and trying to to get to the oars as fast as they can. Meanwhile, up above you, there's this, like, 
a bunch of energy that starts crackling and then these balls of light start glowing and then coming together and coalescing and uh, it starts looking like a bunch of um, a bunch of fires in the sky like a bunch of them and uh, then they start getting closer roll for initiative Flanagan <laughs> so, you know what our problems of ending the campaign could be solved exactly <laughs> Exactly. good rolling by the way nice okay. you, you are able to act first uh, so let's see top of the procedure here um uh, if anyone is firing a missile, you can do that now. Yeah, um, Thornton will grab his longbow out of the little hut and fire. All right, what are you firing at? Uh, a troll behind us. Gotcha. You can uh, fire twice. Okay. Yeah, well, I might as well too. If, uh, you know what? I'm not going to. I'm going to have my spear in, in case any do catch up because we don't know how fast they're going to move. Your target is Ascending Armor Class 15. So let's see. Those don't hit, but Lachan hits for four damage. What is Lachan targeting? Uh, this guy. Roll okay. number 19. All right, you hit him for four damage. All right, and uh, let's see. Uh, if uh, We're already doing the movement part, so let's see. The next part is... Uh, melee combat. Um, they're going to try to catch up. They're going to fail to catch up. You also have a bunch of snakes. Are the, are the snakes going towards the trolls? Or staying yes, on the ship? Yes. Okay. The snakes, I hate they're gonna to be... They're going to hit the front line. I hate to be same not same teamy, but they don't show up till the end of the round, I think, if they're spells, right? That's a good point. Yeah. I keep forgetting that because I keep kind of getting ahead and doing it in advance, but good point. Okay. <coughs> Okay, so let's see. These don't move; they stay in place, and then uh, and then magic. So you start to fly. What direction do you fly, Magnus? Uh, around the the clouds above, and to see who it is that's if if there's anyone flying about up there. You uh you look and you see these electrical discharges in the air, and then you see this coalescing of fire into points mm -hmm. of fire, like a like a bunch of them. Uh, eight well, points of fire. Someone's casting a spell. I want to try to see if I can... You cannot see anyone casting a spell, though. It just seems to be happening in the air. Is this... Okay. But, I mean, on the ground, too? Like, is there... Ah, I guess yeah. I, haven't, I haven't really... I mean... I, yeah, yeah, I yeah, really yeah. Moved, so your yeah. intention is to fly up and then yeah, try to I find really, this person, right? I haven't really moved yet, so what I need to do is get a vantage point. What's your, um, what's your intention overall? What are you trying to do? Intention is to find who's casting the spell. Okay, so you uh, get either in the air or on the ground. Sure, you, know, so. you you fly up into the air and you look around into this miasma. You don't see anything, and you fly over into the bank and you don't see anything in the bank. You look around. This person is clearly invisible. <laughs> and clearly <laughs> casting a spell. Right. Yep. Okay. Um, Let's see the snakes. Uh, they will catch up, so the snakes can uh, the snakes can actually attack on the same turn. I believe we ruled last time. If you want to do that, yeah, I have uh, six poisonous snakes, so uh, I cast them as far as I can back, so they get as you know close as they can. All right, they're in among them. I guess the invisible person, hopefully, if this if this is a normal spell, um, will become visible when they make an attack, which hasn't happened yet, right? <laughs> Barring um, extremely high magic, that should be the case. Yeah. But this is already looking like pretty high magic. Yeah, like what is this, ball lightning or some crazy stuff? Firestorm. It's crazy something. stuff. <laughs> Alright, so let's see. Six snakes, is that right? Yeah, six poisonous. Uh, the one hit point ones probably don't matter. They're just there to cause confusion. Alright, uh, I will make some saves here for these folks. They both fail, and uh, you see already Father Bloombad's snakes start doing their work in the water, and you see gurgling and blood uh, start to spread out from, from beneath the water as these things start to sink. Um, yeah, and then, uh, yeah, this also causes some of these things to start fighting among the water, and it slows them down. The rest are going to try to catch up. They're not going to. Meanwhile, 
finally somebody does reveal themselves in the air flying and uh, it is a sight uh, it looks like a, a, a robed old man like like um, Magnus in fact I just used his token because I don't have another one right now <laughs> um, Magnus 2 <laughs> and um, <laughs> oh, full of awful power enough. Oh. And uh, they, he draws in these eight points of fire and then, like, throws them. And they, they fire like bullets. <laughs> and then, like, these things fire down toward the ship. And then, um, let me make sure I'm reading this right. And then no, it explodes. <laughs> like, all around the ship. Um, tearing out parts of its hull and uh, sending people flying overboard and engulfed in fire and uh, everybody can make a save if you have any uh any bonuses to like dexterity you can apply that okay i decided if i should use no. i fail i'm going to employ erica thistledown's kiss of plus two versus one save nice Okay. Is Magnus subject to this save as well? No, yeah, because Magnus is in the air. Yeah. Alright, so lock and failed. Okay. Okay. Oh, Alright, everyone who failed takes 32 damage. Uh, everyone who succeeds takes 16 damage. Oh. Uh, I, think I, I think I'm instant I, dead. Yeah, I had four hit points. <laughs> Locking well, is dead. Uh, uh, just—he's just gone. You don't see him. He's, he falls off the deck, and his I I immolated body falls off the deck. Oh, Flanagan? Yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I, I love it. I'm, I just think that's amazing. I just love it. <laughs> um, uh, meanwhile, uh, the boat itself. Okay, so the boat itself uses what's called structure points. Uh, and I'm just going to make a call right now without doing looking around here. I think it won't sink, sink the boat, but the boat is well on the way to being sunk, and it is heavily damaged. Oh, my God. <laughs> but this caster has revealed himself. He looks insane and angry. Um, all right, top of the round. Um, and you can roll up a new character, of course. Uh, no, well, everybody. Yeah. Not yet. Remember. Oh, uh, yeah, you actually, you have you've got one thing that you can do. That's right. Never mind. Was well, right? Yeah, you just got to get out of this situation. So here you are. Heretic, Heretic and raise the dead. Oh, was that right? Okay. Yeah, he was very enthused. Uh, about yeah, it. No, not today, but <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. tomorrow. Okay. So um, is that the end of that turn? I'll, yeah, I so call even dead. Uh, that's the end of that turn. The boat uh, comes up, uh, and then the Horn of Blasting. So I'm just going to keep this simple. I just want to make sure that I understand the intention. First of all, who's blowing it? Me. There's a small chance that it can explode and kill everyone. I think it's like a 5% chance. Look at the situation we currently have. <laughs> oh, my God. That's yes. Cool. <laughs> so you'll roll. I want you to roll for that. That way we can all blame you. you know, okay. It's, I respect like, that. And then... And I don't remember if it's what percent chance it is. It's like five percent or something, right? It's okay, I'm just gonna roll. I think it's roll, more than If I roll a, a, if I roll less than a five, or if I roll a five or less on a D100, <laughs> then we have to look it up. We'll start looking at it. Yeah. <laughs> it's not in Swords and Wizardry, but I think we are taking it from AD&D. Yeah. It's one ADMG, I think. Yeah. Okay. We're no good. problem. Yeah. We're good. Okay. So. Um, the intention, I just want to make sure, is to clear the deadfall and to get these creatures out of the way so you can get past. Yes. Okay. That Killing them is much less important than displacing them. Right. So that happens. Uh, you call this horn of, like, the horn of Gondor. And there's this massive explosion in the water and deadfall just shatters and goes flying up everywhere. And you're, you're doused in water, everyone on the ship that has survived and is covered in debris and, and flack and stuff that, from the ship. Um, you're scratched and bloody and your armor torn and you're also completely doused in water. And everyone is just rowing as hard as you can. Um, I'll say that they the dead have been kept from falling overboard. I also need to roll for the mercenaries. I think that probably they're all going to die. I think they all just die. The, the math yeah, on they that, don't that's have impossible. 
they just simply don't have the hit points. If we yeah. all rolled separately, and if we all rolled damage separately, and we rolled nothing but ones, I think they'd still get taken out. Yeah. Fireball is simply too destructive. The hard one is think... Gelver, uh, who is Captain Gelver, who is has actual stats. Yeah, he, he roll a saving throw yeah, for that guy. He's the like the captain of the hounds, right? He's sort of the yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, I think Flanagan is just like a charred, like, and there's smoke everywhere, and then you just see where Flanagan was. He's on the ground, curled up, and just, and there's flames billowing off of him. Maybe someone puts it out, but it's just like his, his Yeti, or actually his snakes and cloak is just burnt in ash, and everything is just black. And he's just lying there dead on the ground, and like, his face is um, blistered, and he's clearly just, just gone. Maybe you have to peel a big hunk of burning. Uh, the railing of the deck off of him or something like that. Now, Ooh, clearly he's dead. The boat gets past. Gilver's dead on the deck of the, the boat. Um, Magnus, however, is flying around near this evil spellcaster. So, what do you do, Magnus? Is it initiative timing yet? Well, uh, top of it the is round. Uh, declare your plans, oh. stunt schemes. Yeah, my Did plan I say as caller that maybe. So it, does, it, does it sound like the trolls are, like we're free of the troll yeah. barricade now? Even That's the right. one in front? Yes. Okay. So maybe missile fire, anybody who's alive can help out Magnus with uh, bow shots, eh? With missile fire against the other guy? It's at a um, an appreciable distance now, so I will have it at a minus four, but yes. Well, what, what is the distance? Uh, it was like 450 feet. Because you are for 500 feet. Yeah, I mean, did we, uh, is, is it the current that's taking us that fast? It was you all just like trying to get there as fast as you could. This all happens in a very short period of time, in a matter of like a well, minute. Well, um, hmm. all right. You needed those snakes? No, I, I wanted to cast a spell on him, but I'm out of range now. Yeah. Yeah, that was the plan, right? Was to try to get through that, use the horn blast, and get on the other yeah. end. So, I th I, but I didn't think we'd be that far past where he was in the sky. I guess the trade-off is that we're not, we're, it's all been resolved, and we're not having to deal with the trolls. Except if Magnus. Yeah. Trolls, so. yeah. Yes. yeah. Plus, your the body has Magnus to be recovered. To deal no, he's his body is recovered. It's it's on. It was not the blasting overboard mm -hmm. was a flourish, which we decided to just not yeah, yeah. go with. Oh, oh, oh um, okay. we remember that. Oh, wait, it's actually recoverable. So, uh, so I think it's, maybe... it's also obvious to you, Magnus, that the destructive power of the spellcaster is beyond anything you've ever seen. But so that doesn't mean you can't kill him. Like he's like what 100 and 100 feet yeah. up in the air now. So, well, you know, um, yeah, uh, I think the declaration for spell will be web. All right, you going for it? All right. Uh, uh, well, hold on. Let me look at the. Oh God, the range on Web is actually pretty short. Now you guys are flying around in magical wizard aerial combat, so like it's a little bit different right now. Like you can, you can, you can yeah, be closer. I can fly within range. That, <laughs> that, <laughs> yes, that was also your yeah. initial goal. So it, it sort of makes sense to me. Uh, we'll but, bring them closer to the barge. Um, so, just generally speaking, though, give me the broad strokes here. Are you intending to duel this guy and try to kill him to the death? Yes. Very well. Oh my God, okay. And you're going to try to use web. That makes sense to me. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm going to try to use web, and I'm going to, but until the moment that the spell goes off, I'm, I'm going to be. Anyway, I don't know. That's what I'm doing. What does he look like? He's doing. Uh, yeah, he. Um... <coughs> He looks like he is um, going to um, try to take control of your mind. You can actually you feel like blood coming out of your nose, and you can already hear the voices in your brain as he starts to try to enter your psyche. Well, okay, let me make sure I'm not. Yeah. 
That's what he's going to try to do. So anyways, uh, yeah. So you see him starting to do that, and you're starting to cast web. It comes down to this. You two will roll for initiative. E, you need to get a six. I didn't get a six. All right. You have to pass a save. Oh, no, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to roll from my actual save. Uh, are you going to allow that, Ross? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, that's, not, that's fine. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, okay. Okay, I feel bad about that. No, I was saying okay. hold on as I was pushing the button. It It's a big enough thing that it, it's barely going to save your life anyway, so, like, I, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I, I apologize. I, I I hang my head in shame before my the entire company. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you uh, you uh, he you he you manage just to keep him out of the your mind long enough. Uh, you can cast the spell. Uh, well, I cast it and uh, and I and and I wrap him up. He uh, plummets from the air and splashes down into the water below. Now, I follow after with my dagger drawn. Is he close to the trolls or in the middle of the, the water? The, the trolls quickly envelop him and surround uh, him. Now, that, that uh, being said, you still got uh, you still got some options. Um, I'm even going to say, like, they're not they're not stupid. <laughs> like, they're going to even try to, like, gather rocks and stuff. You know, this is their whole thing is to try to protect this guy. Sure. You still have some poisonous snakes back there. I don't. Does that still? Does that break if you're too far away? Uh, I don't believe so. I think it's uh, it's for one hour. Okay, I'm gonna have some of. They're gonna like a bunch of them are gonna get a chance to kill these snakes. Uh, what's their armor class? Uh, I it's don't. Like I don't gold. remember. Okay, I'm just gonna say yeah, it's something. Like, it wasn't very high for, for animals. All right. What did you say? Father Chris? I said I think it's usually 12 for animals. Right. Right. One, two, three, yeah, four, right. five, six, seven of them are dead. I don't know if you just want to roll a d6 to see how many poisonous ones are dead. And then go ahead and roll the attacks on... Oh, gosh. Ooh. That's sad. That would be all of them, right? Oh, Thanks. no. <laughs> all right. Well, um, all right. The snakes are dead. So, yeah, they surround him. They get ready to fend you off, um, and uh, you're gonna fly. See him? Yeah, yeah, you see him. Yeah. Uh, he... Well, then magic missile. All right. Uh, let's see. What's the, the range, range on magic it? missile? Oh, it's pretty far. It's yeah, like it's a, like 240 it's a, feet or something, right? It's at least 140, if not Checking 240. Okay. Checking so, and... do, you, do you maintain a distance, like a uh, stay far up in the air and cast magic missile? Uh, I stay far away, not far up in the air. Across the river, perhaps, or something. Above the ground, not far above the ground. <laughs> okay, I got you. I think I know your intent. Okay, so you do that, you yeah. cast Magic Missile. Um, oh, that, uh, there's no initiative, you can just roll the damage. Okay, well I've got two of them, and I get three missiles apiece here. Uh... That's plus three, so 14. 14 damage? Yeah. I've got another one. Can I shoot it? <laughs> uh, another what? Oh, no. Another magic missile. No, because you, you fire into this, and um, and then you see him, like, gasping and holding something, and he pulls something out, whispers something, and crushes something, and the web just goes, and evaporates. And, uh, and then you see him... Uh, let me actually... That's going to be his turn. That's all he can do. Um, you know the man? Did, he, did he not take damage? Oh, yeah. He took damage. Yeah, he looks okay. in bad shape. And um, now you can roll a d6 because now he is uh, alive. Damn it. Ah. Okay. <laughs> Let me see what he's going to do. Dude, just imagine this. Wizard this is like duel. Cool. Yeah. The um, cultivator war. He disappears. I've I fly away towards the ship. Okay. Cool. Yeah, you, you fly in the air for a little bit, you know, seeing that many it's of your friends are dead by this. Yeah. Skimming the skimming the surface. <laughs> I don't. I'm not trying to fall. Take falling damage. Did he take falling damage too? 
I'd oh, water. Water. He's he oh, he would have been all right at that point. I've I've fallen oh, fifty feet into water before. Oh, I want to curse so much more than I'm cursing right now. Believe me, goodness gracious. <laughs> Give me his hide. <clears throat> God damn. Uh, yeah, that was good. Yeah, this, you better not roll any more random just... encounters. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just out of curiosity, does, does Magnus have Lightning Bolt right now? No. I really oh. am. I, I am. I am suffering from a paucity of third level spells. I have one third level spell, and it's fly. All right. So real quick, you guys. Uh, Father Bloombad, is it possible within the rules for you to gather together... Uh, raise the dead and to raise a dead person. Is that possible right now? With well, you have? I, I prepared finger of death today is the problem. So like, is it possible for it to be the next day and then... Yes, the normal time limit is five days. So you could bring everybody back, right? Uh, they survive yeah, like, their constitution roll on the attempt. Yeah. Well then, that will be our next thing. Well, one, per <laughs> one person per day, right? You have one, how many... Little piffle spells you have per day. Heretic. I'm reading the description of the spell oh, right okay. now to confirm everything. Yeah, I can raise somebody, but it will be a period of at least a week before they can function normally. Yeah. It sounds like we're stopping in Caden's rest. That'd be cool. Well, let's see. I mean, I guess, uh, is it going to be the next day to get there anyways? Let's see if the planning might just be dead anyways. It'll take two I've... days. Okay, so I'll we can find out whether I'm going to be alive on the barge on the way back. <clears throat> Flanagan has six constitution, by the way. That's not good. He's a uh, 50%, 50 chance of surviving, of being raised. All right, let's go ahead and do it. Let's... Uh... Yes. Let's, let's see. If it was anyone else, I'd say that there are other ways of bringing him back from the brink, but I know him. He wouldn't want us to truck with such powers. <laughs> I don't know, you wouldn't. That's They're just great. too freaking weird. Okay. So, Heretic, what, is it, what does the this look like on the deck? What are you What are you doing to him here? Well, I probably uh, lay him out on like a, a plank or something, and I uh, you know perform the holy rituals over him. And uh, then I draw on the power of the light and ask okay. that this, this brave warrior of the light be brought back. Okay, so I guess a 1 to 50 means I'm back. Does that sound right? 1 to 50. Raise dead survival. Okay. So Flanagan lies there still. Maybe you've washed all the ashes off of his face. Um, just looking up, there's nothing in his body. You guys ready for the roll? Let me do some IRL prayer real quick. <laughs> okay, Three, two, one. Oh. His eyes open. <laughs> it's like maybe wow. a little bit longer than you'd imagine, and it's like it's not happening. And then he just sort of like goes to the side, and then he just kind of goes <laughs> back. He looks awful. His skin is burned and everything else. I don't know how many hit points I have at this point, but um, he just looks up at you all and um, and just says nothing. And uh, whispers, thank you, just thank you, to Father Bloombat, and then just closes his eyes again, lies on the deck. You see that happen, and then uh, he raises a hand that's a human hand, and it falls down to his side. Hey. Hey, Ooh. that's cool as hell. That's cool. <sighs> Big brotherly embrace for the dude. Purified by flame. Nice. Magnus. All right, and then we have... We have another day. I can do a second one. Yeah. I mean, Magnus is. All right. yeah. I don't know if you want to waste one on Lockham. He, he, he hardly deserves it. Well, I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, Pri Pridery is dead. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I will attempt to bring both dead, Pridery aren't next. Are you, are you all, are, did you all both do, do John first, because that's two sessions. Well, you're, higher, you're higher level, aren't you? <laughs> no, I'm still level one. I'm almost level <laughs> oh. two. But well, I mean, there you go. Yeah, oh, you've yeah, been with the, with the group longer. <laughs> what's your constitution? Uh, fourteen. Well, yeah, I agree You're with uh, I agree with Heretic. Let's do let's do John. Let's see it. <laughs> what's yours, John? Your constitution. Oh, you're muted. 
I still can't hear you. You're not saying anything. He's also not talking. I think he's trying oh. to. Uh, uh, you're muted himself. in Discord. Oh, yeah. there you go. No, we still can't oh. hear you. Oh, there we no. go. Now, yeah, uh, there, I've, yeah, I've done that. It was slipped up because I was sneezing. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I have What's a con of eight. All right, 50 50 shot. No, I mean, no, I I don't think you should use this on. I think you need to bring back prudery. I I. No, no, I mean, let's Thornton, do it. Let's see it. Yeah, guys, okay. we've got five days. You're both getting res eventually. Yeah, yeah. Don't quibble about the motor so yeah. much. <laughs> roll roll okay. some dice. You might be dead anyway. So, yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's why they're like he might not make it. Let's just see if he's good. Dice rolls do not correlate to each other. That's what random means. What they do correlate yeah, to is solid. prayer. So everyone start praying for our guy. <laughs> Do I do I row, you gonna... just roll a D one hundred? Okay. This would be a record, by the way. Okay, so I gotta do this in the chat then. Okay. The ultimate initiation for if your character is yeah. not <laughs> When this was when this was old school uh, essentials, that was like normal. Like every session, forty percent of players the characters would die. Nice. That's six? Still there, yep. Yeah. He hops hey. right up. Yeah. All I don't right. know what this guy is. Who is this person? <laughs> what just happened? Yeah. Welcome back from the welcome back from the dark. I mean So the thing is, right, none of the mercenaries are there any like we're the only ones alive, right? In other words, none of the regular people survived. I mean, you could do the mercenaries too, as long as you don't run out of time. However, that works. But let's uh, let's hear about Perduri and Manakin, Lockin or Lockin. Right. That's a different. Mm -hmm. Ooh, mm -hmm. oh no, that's probably not good. What's your constitution? Fourteen. You're good. You got him. Constitution has a hundred percent raised dead survival chance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you don't need. You didn't even need to roll. Wow. Nice. What about Manakin? <laughs> What's Manakin's constitution? Lockin. Yeah. What's, day four. Oh, sorry. Him. Stop killing Manakin. He's not. <laughs> um, Manakin wisely got out of this line of work. Is 15, so I guess he's just good, right? He's good too. Nice. Um, quite the uh, quite the miracle uh, that you yeah. that you witness. I wonder and what we that still would have, do. Uh, the captain. What, what would that yeah, do? Yeah, Captain to Lockin. Indeed. Uh, at this point, I, I do wonder. Um, but uh, you make it back to uh, to Caden's rest. Um, all of the people who experience system shock of being brought back from the dead uh, will not be able to continue adventuring tonight. You'll have to rest, uh, so you'll have to use an alternate character or roll a new one. I'd li also okay. like to try to raise the captain for the fifth day. Oh, yes, Gilver? that's right, Gilver, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Richard, do you want me to do it, or do you want to do it? I know that you... Have this lineage with. I'll Gilbert. do it. What's his con? Uh, he's listed uh, under Caden's Rest. If you go to Rapanothic Other World or Overworld, and then I Caden's probably don't Rest. have license to read it. But uh, Kelver the Unearth. Oh, yeah, I see his. I can see his bio and info, but not his character sheet. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, well, I have it right here. I'll just. I'll roll it, first. Okay. This roll is for Kate, is for the guy. He rolled oh, okay. a twenty-eight. It's good. Nice. Like whatever it is, he's okay. Yeah, he's got a con of ten. Raised dead chance fit uh seventy five percent. Nice. He should probably have max morale at this point too, right? I I <laughs> either that or very low. I mean <laughs> All the people on the peninsula, I imagine, are these insane religious zealots. I mean insane and in, not entirely just in a bad way, but in a complicated like they've been through a lot and they've seen some crazy stuff, so they're probably like I will march into hell for all of you. You know, like the people on the peninsula are, are pretty big fans of you all. So it's the people further um, out. Just a quick Girl. question, Ross. The was Galver the captain underneath Flanagan? Of the mercenaries? I thought he was the captain of the house guard. Like he was specifically the guy who stayed home and took care of stuff. He was. We... Um and then we discussed it like, do we want to bring him because he was willing to go. He was yeah, willing yeah. to go on okay. this one. Yeah. Another very quick question is, is so if this is a backup character, is would this be my um like uh what whatever you call it, my because I've built up enough stuff in the town. This is my um who would 
uh, come after Flanagan? Would that be the character I would make at that level or and all that stuff? Yeah. So, um, I think that, and I apologize. I, I, this is one of the things that the rule is really slippery for me. So let me kind of make a call on this on the spot that I think you can make this your inheritor, but this can be your only inheritor. So like, right. you know, uh, but if they die, then you can make a new inheritor, but, but you yeah, can't have five. Right. You can't have like a network right. of, yeah, it's not a troop gameplay system. Yeah, that's great. And what level would he be then? Level one. Well, no, I'm sorry. No, you're, you're a state. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm, I, I'm really sorry. I'm, 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 I'm not trying to complicate this, but actually I think this is not your inheritor. And they would start at level one because I think you either have to retire or die in order to have your inheritor start at a higher level. Okay. That's yeah. cool with me. So it'd be level one. Uh, on level one. Okay. And do I roll for hit points at level one or do you get max? I can't remember. Now the people with level one characters, what you could do if you want is actually retire and then you could start at a higher level. That's why you got a state. But I'm sorry, Jay. Sorry, what were you saying? Since you're yeah, okay, I'm gonna do that. Oh, Let's you're gonna it. retire Flanagan. Yep, Flanagan. makes sense Flanagan actually. Yeah, he's uh, his face is covered in burns, and he's um, he's just like <laughs> I, I can't I can't go on with you all. I've I've my body is weak, and um, he's still like in bed when you're talking to him and saying this, and his face is covered in burns, and. Um, He's, uh, it's clear that he's not fit to go out at least for a week. And his mind seems like he's just, he's just weary of it. And, um, so there's another person on the, there's another person in the guard who is, um, he's been a cat. I don't know what he is like the captain of the outer, the, one of the patrols or something like that, who was a soldier, um, previously. And he's, and Flanagan says, um, his name's, his name's Brian. He's, um, I mean, you've all met him. He's, uh. He's healthy. He's he's uh, he knows how to fight better than I do, and um, I, I think he's he's ready for something like this. I've been thinking about it for some time, and I'm I think I'm ready just to stay stick around the 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 lodge here from now on. So Brian can be a fighter or a thief, or I want to throw this out there, a fighter thief. You can also do that. So, uh, but it's at your current level, whatever Flanagan's level is. Awesome. Humans can multi-class. You can duel. You can have a. You can have two classes, and it's based on your race. So I'm pretty sure. Actually, I'm sorry. Humans can't. I think that. I'm, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. They Human. can. They can dual class, but then that means like a change of career where they're like encouraged yeah. to not play their old class. No, yeah. no. I think humans can't. I think. Uh, I think dwarves and elves. No, no. Humans hum can dual class. I was humans, looking at it. Humans dual class. Demi humans multi class. Oh my yeah. bad. Okay. And and dual classing has like a different meaning kind of and it's like DM discretion how much they get to retain of their old class if they choose to change. Yeah, and you need pretty high stats to do it. Um in I think your original and class to be. That's okay. Uh, so my level is is Flanagan's level which is oh, I was so close to 6. I'm level 5. That's cool. I'm into it. Um so that's all I, I don't want to interrupt it. I just had to ask those questions. So um, I'm ready to get to go. I've already rolled up a character, but I, I haven't done the stats. So, all right. I mean, I've done the stats. I haven't done anything else. So, but I'm I'm pretty ready. I can do it while we're going. So you all won't have any downtime from th this session to the next adventure and next session because you've traveled several days. You'll be at Caden's rest, and then we're going to go on the adventure. Um, the uh, the kill boat is. We'll assume that uh, it's it's damaged, but that you can use it. So if something, we'll have to do a lot of repair. Yeah, if you face another high-level flying invisible fireball casting wizard, it might not make it. But you know, or a catapult, or a dragon, or something. But um, uh, or a rock. <laughs> uh, anyways, you come back to Caden. Uh, you come back to Caden's rest. You spend the night there. You know, you you put, you know, put everyone in their, their quarters uh, to rest, like Flanagan, the others. I mean, and, I, didn't, and, I just... Hold on, and you're at the tavern, and you gather together, and you hear that there is something has gone wrong, and there's a whole fuss 
that uh, the stonemasons, there's a quarry to the northwest, and there's a hill there. And um, that that quarry was established last at the beginning of this past season. And uh, they say that the stones are now like steel and that the earth doesn't yield them. And the, they're, the masons are unable to bring back not only just stone, but even gypsum. Many of the basic components of life here that are hewed from stone are unable to be pulled from the ground. Um, can I ask that somebody else, uh, I, I wouldn't mind just rolling this guy up. Can someone else be sort of a caller? <laughs> you want me to just go down it? the list? Yeah, whoever. Yeah, who's next on the list? Uh, next on the list is uh, Algar. Alrighty. At last, my penchant for talking a lot will pay off. May I ask something? Um, Ross, you, you said that uh, we could uh, retire and have roll up a character at a higher level. Is that, yeah. is that right? The people who died? Yeah, so you, uh, uh, I'll post it here. You have, um, you, you have a, a buy-in for the kill boat for, the estate, uh, for your estate. Uh, and it has level 2 thief or fighter if your current character perishes or if you retire... Uh, it would be at your current level. Oh, I'm sorry, actually. I think I might just change that on the spot if that's okay, because that wouldn't gain you any benefit, and I like it when characters retire. I like this kind of like non-death fetish approach to this gritty world. Like, probably people <laughs> would retire after what they've been through. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, mm. so I, I'd like to amend that if you are interested. You would make a level 2 fighter or thief, if that's what okay. you want. Yeah, I've got a fighter rolled up here at level two. Okay, it'd be max hit points at level one and then rolled hit points for level two if you choose to do that. Or, okay. AJ, if you prefer, you can keep adventuring. And either way, if your current character perishes, you would still roll up your next character at level two if you wanted. I think uh, I'm right on the cusp of level two. Uh, I think I'm going to stick with Perderi. If he's if the, uh, the system shock is too much for him to adventure, I could just you do a guard or something like that in the interim yeah that's a good point yeah um so yeah you could roll up a level one character uh yes yeah you'd roll up a level one character for now um yeah sounds good uh father chris what were you saying you were gonna you were gonna sh say something well magnus has been Inconsolable is, is the wrong word. Um, he's mad. He's mean mad. And he becomes abusive. <laughs> About what? Uh, anything. He begins he begins casting steel barbed words at anybody that, that uh, any conversation that he drifts around or anybody that walks near him. And uh and he's and he's got like a thousand yard stare. Uh, and he, because and and if he says anything, it's either in some other language or just the words, "I had him. I know I had him. I would have had him. I could have killed him. I should have killed him. I will kill him." <laughs> <laughs> and he and and he he's and and upon returning to Caden's rest, he's. He just goes to his tower. Can I? Can we just? Do you mind if uh, a few days? Is it okay just to have a little situation here where Flanagan um, goes, hobbles over, and knocks on your door and talks to you about it? I don't mind if no. If if other people don't mind. <laughs> Please Seems do. Like a situation. I mean, yeah. Knock, 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 knock. Flanagan, uh, you in there? Magnus, are you in there? Uh, the door opens and and Rex is waiting for you. <laughs> Magnus is a few oh. feet behind him. <laughs> Magnus, Magnus, let me in, and he looks awful. I think maybe maybe one of his eyes is kind of melted shut still from the from the fireball and everything. And he says, um, he says, he said, and he just pushes past Rex. Um, goes, get me a seat. We need to talk. Rex doesn't have a problem with this. Okay. Uh, Magnus, looks, Magnus looks. Magnus uh, looks dis, dis, 
disdainfully at Rex. <laughs> now, you listen here. Dog. People, people in this town look up to you, and you're walking around. They're scared you're going to th throw something, throw some throw some magic in their face. The morale here is already bad enough. Whatever you got going on, whatever your problem is, you got to get over it. I don't I don't care what it is with that wizard <laughs> and you failed or whatever. You got to stay alive and you got to stay out there and get over this. He's like oh, and he's like coughing. He's like I see you're you're recovering well from the from the wound that uh that was inflicted upon you because of me. It's not because of you. It's well, I make my own decisions, Magnus. Is that what this is about, too? He could have... We could have stopped him. I could have stopped him. Had I chosen differently, perhaps... Perhaps... Well, if I hadn't cast Fly, I'd just be burned alive with the rest of you. But, uh... Anyway, perhaps next time I'll choose better. And there I don't, I don't have any time. wise words for you, Magnus. Well, <clears throat> you're right. There might not be a next next time. I don't know. I don't have any wise wise words for you. Uh, so maybe I would never. Live. I don't, every time you go up there is a time you might die. We all know that. So you you're making you you're not you're not out there trying to help anybody. You're not in charge of anybody. You're responsible for anybody. But. Don't let your don't let your ways up at the tower. Don't let your um, whatever you do in here take over your ideas about. Remember that all the people are around you, and I know you do that. But I'm don't let your. I'm not responsible for for the people who 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 burn alive around me, for the mad wizard that has chosen me as his target. I'm not responsible. Perhaps I should just give in and begin spending your lives. Like water, like ponds. It would be simpler. No. You gotta do what we've all come in here to do and why we go out there every single time. You've gotta kill that person. <laughs> you've gotta you got and, and you gotta keep going down into that those damn holes and don't stop until it's all gone. That's why we're here. Did I be I giving mean, the same speech to you, my friend? If you did, I you wouldn't have to. I just can't do it anymore, that's all. Look at me. I have no choice, except the choice between whether to, to go on caring or stop. Well, you better keep on caring. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll keep going on, one way or the other. But whether or not I keep letting it get to me in this fashion. That's what uh, stings me at the moment, you see? It's quite distracting, these... Uh, Emotions and such. When I see my good friends burned to death, well, so Magnus, you know. When it gets to you too much, you'll be here beside me in the lodge. I hope, and not not in whatever hell or heaven there is. Um, it's just got to me too much, and that's all there is. I'll be here though, so well, that's it's not all bad. No, that's a comfort. Uh, you, and thank you for coming by, and uh, and do and do stop by again for tea sometime, and uh, and goodbye. And listen, you, you can be angry, but I'm telling you, don't do it out there with everybody around. You're scaring people. That's all I'm saying. And kill that person. Yeah. we Will do. <laughs> Get up and I hobble up. <laughs> Walk out. Yeah. You take it easy. Um, <sighs> I, I don't know if you all attempt to do this, but another thing that, that happens... Um, your characters don't know this, but Gilver meets with uh, Flanagan. And... Um, they all make the same choice Flanagan does, that uh, the wilds of Albion in the Forest of Hope are no place for men, and they refuse to go anymore. And um, they all make the same choice Flanagan does, and they follow his lead. Now, from your perspective, if you try to hire or commission any of your mercenaries to be adventuring mercenaries, you find that they refuse even on the penalty of death. Alternately, there are tons of adventurers that have come looking looking for adventure. You basically have your pick as far as that goes. Much, much easier lives to spend. People who are eager. Indeed. Yeah. 
And I, I could have healed everybody up. I had, Over the course of five days, I would have had 15 Cure Light wounds and five Cure Serious wounds, so everybody could be healed up, right? Wow. Nice. I I, th I confess, I think I'm... I think I, my attention was elsewhere for a second when a critical moment was passed. Flanagan's retiring? Yeah. Wow. Honestly, completely fair. Uh... <laughs> I love it. I just, yeah, it's cool. I can, <laughs> no, fair. You earned it. What am I? Just like, let's do it. That sounds fun. All I'm right. almost ready with, with Brian, who is a member of the Hound, uh, of the of the Hounds of the Pine, and wants to make this, wants to turn things around. I don't know what he's going to be like. We'll just play and see what happens, as always. All right. So, um, I'm curious whether he will, whether he will have respect or disgust for Flanagan. You know what I mean? Because no if way. like if Flanagan that. if Flanagan retires and the first thing that happens is this guy decides to join, yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, maybe he's yeah. like, wow, I can't believe that Flanagan would have done that. Yeah, set well, that yeah, big hoary black cloak aside and not, you know, and and put it on on display and never touch it again. Yeah, yeah, I've got some I got some thoughts. Um, all right, Algar, Richard, uh, what's the plan now? <laughs> okay, so let me verify our current status. We have one fully functional fifth level wizard, a fourth level uh, ranger type guy. I am a six fighter level wizard. fighter. Oh, a six level wizard. Uh, yeah. Two fighters. Uh, sorry, three fighters, and also our powerful cleric who is eighth level. Seven, seventh. Seventh level. Okay. Unbelievable. Seventh level. Yeah. Okay. Do we have enough oomph to go attack the destination? Honestly, my gut instinct is to wait a week to finish repairing the ship and to, like, recover. But you're right. No, the person who absolutely needed to recover was Flanagan. You guys both need a uh, hexen. Pradari and John's character, whose name I've forgotten, need a week to recover from resurrection, but they're both coming along, I assume. <sighs> it is it is also quite possible. So you're right on the edge of any chance of the trail not being entirely cold. You're right on the edge. But like it's very possible that the trail has gone cold. Uh, you know, it has been days added, you know. And it's already been another two weeks from the time that you did that recon. Mm. Well, that doesn't mean that they're not still in the same cave, unless they just pulled up stakes and moved yeah. you the can, whole operation. Uh, you, you can totally sail, and that's also an entrance into the dungeon. Is mm -hmm. now you can use the kill boat, and you can get there within a day and a half, and you can enter into the dungeon that way. I've got eight eight more hit points. Nice, nice. Check it, yeah. Sweet. Wow, swag. Yep, sweet sixteen. Don't Watch let this one spiders. die. <laughs> Watch out for those spiders. <laughs> His name is Ulf, Ulfkel Snilling. Nice. Ah, Ulfkel. A Nordlander, eh? I'll make you guys some character sheets here just by creating duplicates for now. Um, okay. well, if, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, no, it's, it's fine. But I... I it's fine. I'll handle it later. Okay. Father Bloombad, I'd ask you what you'd propose, but I know that you basically just always want to be hitting someone with your mace, so I... <coughs> Any strong objections to just going at that cave and investigating it real quick and or blowing it the heck up? Yeah, yeah. A worst case scenario, we could collapse it. Okay. Oh, man. I'm going to miss Flanagan, but also I'm so proud of him. He survived. He tapped he out at the right moment. Got his hands back. <laughs> just keep the, yeah. I just I just like keeping the, let's just, I don't know, it's the nature of the game too, right? I don't know, it just felt like. Knowing I, when I to fold him is important. Instant decisions and just go go with my gut. Feels fun. Mm. Felt like a good narrative moment for him to Extremely. Like, no, it was cool as hell. I'd like to say okay. kind of like, if you're okay with it, Ross, sometimes just uh, have a little Flanagan moment, sometimes like that back in town. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I have a lot of writing to do because that's going to... There's a lot of things that's going to shake up because of all that, which is exciting. Cool. Okay, so it yeah. sounds like the plan is to get on the kill boat and sail to the cave and enter the dungeon. Is that right? 
Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. I don't. I no one objecting to that. Nope, no, we're good. No. good. Um, I would like to before we leave give orders to. Um. Well, no, I don't have enough gold for that. Unless someone. Wait, what wants do you? To... What do you? Well, so it costs four thousand gold to use an assassin to actually use him to send him to kill somebody. Let's do that between sessions, because that's gonna that's that's complex. But don't worry, you won't lose the benefit of time. You'll you'll okay. I know it'll happen. And remind me if I forget that. But yeah, okay. Um, okay. If I do it, I'll need I'll need somebody to spot me about a thousand. Before we leave, can I get better armor? I've got Gambison right now. Yeah, absolutely. Armor yeah, is, yeah. is available let's, let's in town. Get you, up. Um, you could purchase a shield and plate if people pitch in the money. Although, we have found that that doesn't always work. <laughs> yeah. I have like an 18 AC and I went down like a chump. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. All right, here we yeah, are right. again. Okay. At the bridge. So, well, how much gold do you need? About a thousand, he mentioned. Uh, about a thousand. Uh, I, I... No, 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 not for that. I mean, uh, oh. for the armor. Oh, right. Well, isn't plate 60 and what's what's a shield? Here, uh, I'll, I'll give you a hundred. Here's a hundred gold outfit yourself. Thank you, Father Bloombad. Just to make sure that I'm on the same page so uh, you said that Father Bloom bad that you'd be able to heal so is Prideri still suffering from the yeah everybody should be healed I mean that's you know it could have done a lot of healing it's but 15 okay. cure light wounds so that would be like plus one on all them and then the cure light wounds okay Maybe 20, like 30, 30 40, 40 50 I just wasn't sure if there's any other like effect that causes w Pure would prevent him from going back out with y'all. Plus, there's natural healing for five days. So fifty okay. plus. What's cure serious? Well, nobody who took the who got raised from the dead can do anything for a week, right? Yeah, there's a yeah. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, there's a recovery <laughs> period from the exploding. And then another uh, uh, 27 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 12. So yeah, it's over 80, almost 90 hit worth of healing. I can dish out plus natural healing. Everybody that was wounded should be healed. Just in time to die. Okay. Um, you... Um, you set sail the next uh, morning, you know, when you awaken. Algar has busily, in the, uh, you know, with every waking moment, uh, acted as a boats, what, what do you call it, a, a boats, Wayne, yeah. Uh, Boat fixing guy. I don't know. He's, he's not smart enough about this to know the words. And, uh, yeah, you nail some boards onto the thing. And anyways, you set sail on the river, and um, the weather is holding. As it's, it's clear skies. The winds are picking up. It's brisk. 40 degrees Fahrenheit and um, you sail for the first day as evening approaches no moon arises in the sky Algar you immediately know that that means something is wrong uh -oh. there should be a full moon this is not here right now uh, let's see here. I think we'd all know something is wrong if that's the case like if it was a full moon last night and there's no moon this night something is wrong this does not require occult knowledge. Now, but I do have occult knowledge. Do I have an idea what is wrong? Uh, some great power, uh, some ancient and great power has taken notice of you and manifested itself unto the over, uh, the overworld. Um, they maintain their power usually in the, uh, in the underworld. 
but it has expressed itself perhaps by one of its lieutenants here. It could easily swipe your mortal ex existence to the side if it chose. Um, that would cost it something, right? Yes. There's a reason it doesn't. Yes, yes, everything is exactly. And um, so, you uh, you hear the, the, the familiar, uh, all of you hear this like voice and um, it, it uh, your, your brain starts to, you get this headache and, and um, you, uh, your eyes start to run and um, two of you can recognize what this thing says. Uh, one of them is Magnus, who speaks its language, and the other one is Algar, um, uh, who is receiving this communication directly into his mind. And uh, it basically has come and it says, I have come to parlay. I rolled this, by the way. <laughs> well, parlay away. I, uh, I, I return in its language. It's, it speak. ignores you. It's speaking to Algar. Oh. Speak, thing of the darkness. Tell us your words. I give you a century of peace if you leave my master's temples alone to do our work here for a later age when you will be long past eaten by worms. A thousand years. <laughs> Matt, you, Magnus laughs out loud. <coughs> or are you speaking out loud, or are you are you speaking only in your mind? I'm, I say that out loud. Okay. Uh, bound by such a pact, uh, it uh, it laughs and in, in a hateful voice, it just says no. There can be there can be bargains between darkness and light, but not at such a terrible price. Return to your master and tell him to return with a better offer. We will see you soon. I'm sure you will. Brian, who I have no idea what he's like, Brian is standing beside you on the deck and uh, and uh, looking up at the sky and he looks over at you, Al Algar, and um, I have no idea how he's going to talk or anything either, but he's he's like, what were you just talking about? Uh, there's a moment where, like, Algar is trying to decide, like, how much to initiate these guys into the secret lore. And he's like... A warlord means to do ill to all lawful and light-abiding peoples of Albion. Uh, and he requested that we grant him and he offered peace and said that he would grant us a hundred years of respite if only we would stay our hand and interfere no further with his work. I told him that wasn't enough. He would need to offer at least a thousand years. He, uh, he did not accept the bargain. Mm. <clears throat> um, by you know, the way, um, just, just to really quickly, um, Brian has like he keeps his hair well trimmed um, in a in a bowl cut. He always in the morning he uses a knife to shave. He's got a really strong jaw. He trains. Um, he's definitely like a soldier, and he's very very. He keeps uh, he's very prepared, um, but he he doesn't know what to say about this. He's just like him. I sort of aside to uh, Magnus. What I wanted to say is that this sort of thing doesn't happen very often, but I don't think that's true anymore. I think it happens more often than uh, than people think. Nonetheless, <sighs> uh, it's significant that this thing was willing to even make such an offer, because it means that it considers us a serious threat. To I me, think I take it as, uh, yes, evidence that we should move forward with our plan and put pay to all of these roustabouts. These wizards and demons and generally annoying personages that insinuate themselves in the lives of honest folk. Let's give them more to worry about, I says agree. Wolf Kill. <laughs> the people of Albion and all the people of the world, they deserve better than this. And no one's going to give it to them but us. That's what I say. I. And Magnus turns his back and walks away in disgust, even from himself, to the prow of the boat. 
What's uh, what, what, shaking what's, his head? What's going on with the, what's going on with the wizard there? Everyone, rubes. oh, all of them rubes, and I'm among them. He's grappling with some. He blames himself for an unfortunate circumstance which we found ourselves in not long ago. But, uh, I think it will pass. But it's something he has to grapple with. Yeah, it's yes, like Flanagan got burned, right? Is that what you're talking about? When Flanagan Quite got badly. burned? Yes. Yeah. Most of us got burned. We all got very, there were very few survivors. Well, we all know about it. Yeah. I mean. But... Well, I'm, I'm new around here, but where I come from, we have a saying. Death is inevitable, so don't worry about it. Let's do as much good as we can. Uh, that's what I say. It's a good, it's a good credo. It can carry you far. <coughs> the cavern ahead is a is a pit. The cavern ahead leads us to the uh, the pits of Rapanathuk, a long defiled tomb of a long defiled tomb of ancient heroes, corrupted by chaos. It's called. They call it the Dungeon of Graves, and within it, one of our enemies wreaks havoc against the people of the peninsula. Our role here, to, our role here is to thwart their aims and ensure they can bring no more mischief against our people. By, by the sword or by the by the horn. Algar, if you don't mind me saying, you're, you're speaking as though none of us know of this. We've all lived in Zelkor's Ferry for, or Caden's Rest for long enough. I'm so I'm legends. Forgive me. I'm so used to I forget sometimes how much things have changed since I first arrived here. You're not taking on new people here. I mean I mean I can only speak for myself, but I've been around here for a while now, so True. So crazy shit, huh? Well, I've never seen a moon disappear, but That's new to me too, no. honestly. Never seen that. I've heard of it, but I've never seen it. The world is full yeah, of wonders. Yeah, Father, Father Blumbad pulls out his holy symbol with a continual light on it and douses the deck in light. Fear not, the light is always with us. Mankind's oldest and greatest ally. I think Brian's the kind of person who wants to be, like, uh, super macho and know everything, but is, like, clearly around people. Is like, I've never seen that before. I've never seen that before. <laughs> and he's trying to keep up, like, uh, like the um, two, two, two... He wants to be mansplaining, but he can't right now. Poor Brian. <laughs> oh. He will, though. Wait, wait for one more level. He's gonna really piss you guys off. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to it. <sighs> okay, so um, yeah, so you spend a night. Um, this is the night before you spend a night on the bank. Set up a guard. Uh, the following morning, you sail, and uh, uh, I assume you must have hired an adventurer or two. Now that's gonna suck uh, with the. XP, but somebody's got to watch the boat, or or you could try to hide the boat and cache it and cover it with stuff and hope for the best. I don't know, but um, I feel like we have a moral responsibility to give the younger generation an opportunity to earn some experience points. So they're going to watch the boat. Yeah, I think so. They will still get an XP share, but they will not get a treasure share because um, that is they are adventurers. So okay, okay. Uh, we'll say two for now. Um, okay. Okay. Um, that was the opposite. That was treasure, but not XP. Yes. That makes sense, actually. Yeah. Sorry. That makes sense. Now, if they were here in the dungeon, they would get both half, yeah, yeah. half of both. But okay. So. Um, yeah. That was XP. <laughs> so um, you uh, bring the boat to uh, a, a, a stop in a rocky portion. Uh, as I described before, there's sort of like a, a waterfall that cascades into a wide mouth in a cave, and then you have this massive old bridge, and it has like these kind of rocky eddies and waterfalls that goes down. Um, and um, so you moor the boat, and you, you disembark and follow along the rocky uh, shore uh it's almost like rock climbing. You have to kind of climb the stones parallel to this and you make it to the mouth and you descend down. And what you see here, I need to clarify, is not like other dungeon maps. 
So if you use the distance tool, you'll see the truth that this is like 400 feet right here. Okay, so I can't actually show you what your lantern would see because it makes no sense. So this is going to work almost like overland time. This is going to be more abstracted, okay? Um, mm -hmm. And when you descend down into this cavern past the waterfalls, there's this big uh, kind of underground river, and this cavern is enormous. It makes no sense that such a large cavern could exist under Albion. It's almost like, well, an underworld. It's like another world. The, the, the ceiling where you can see it is 350 feet high. It goes um, in places touching the edge of Father Bloombad's light. But in most places, it goes on into the infinite darkness. And... Um, Okay. That is what you see from where you are. As you look around, you can see the this river continues on ahead of you to the relative southwest. Mm -hmm. um, there's also cavern paths to your left and right. There's as well a... Um, uh, let me see here. A So the a, river is flowing from upper right to lower left. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. I have, the, I have this wrong. It actually goes the opposite way. It goes. Oh, okay. Yeah, it goes. Uh, goes out. Well, I'm glad I checked. Sorry so about that. Goes. And and then there. This is actually a depression. If you're like, if it's like a t topographic map, um, this begins to go down into some pit, hundreds of feet down. So where did we come from, Ross? Uh, from up here. So the actual oh. path to enter would be kind of like this. Oh from yeah. Yeah. Okay. Are there any tracks, any trails? <laughs> is there any... First thing I want to check, what sort of indications of what sort of random encounters we might bumble across? Is there... Are there scraps of rotting flesh from a ghoul? Are there purple worm sign? Is there... Do I see any like residue of old fires or soot indicative of like humanoids? What sort of stuff do we see? Get, everybody, give me ideas for things. Let's sure. let's dropping of scat and yes, yeah, scat of, of horrible and, monsters. Yeah. Discarded sacks that used to contain food. Okay, I was I was wondering first. I kind of need you to specify on what kind of sack we were talking about here. <laughs> was, Discarded uh, ones. Oh, if it, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, crouchings um, for so down each other's. You you could take a turn to search the area. Um, however, this turn uh, to be useful at all would actually be. I'm, I'm sorry, it would take three turns because it's such a big, wide, open area, and it's just this massive cavern. You actually need to kind of like search around um, what is one grid, which is uh, thirty minutes. All right. How does how does do it? Okay. Like we need some sign of something that's gonna of uh, what's going okay. on in here, right? Okay, I agree, but I also want to say this is exposed enough to enough to enough risk of a random encounter itself that anyone here has veto power over that. If anyone wants to say don't do it, we won't do it. Information is power, my friend. All right, we do it. Brian okay. complains about the lack of mercenaries. He's he's like, if we had, if we had half a dozen, even a half a dozen. Bowman in here and half a dozen pikemen, this would be so much easier. Yeah, the fact that been, the, the hands are not could, aren't no, available you, is a real well, disadvantage here. Uh, and then you you could you could lose half a dozen more friends. Everybody I'm can roll saying, a d6 to search. I'm just saying this would be much safer with a bunch more soldiers. That's all I'm saying. I'm not sure if that's true. There are circumstances where the, where a small group is proves a small group of men cut above are more valiant than a are more useful than a, a great mob of the stand, the common man, no matter how brave <laughs> they may be. Magnus, you can roll a d20. I see you rolled a one. That's where we can disagree, I guess. He says. Algar, you can also roll a d20. Roll roll one d6. Uh, yeah, D6, that's yeah, right. Research. 19. Also 19. Yeah. It's an important two. number, apparently. 
Uh, just like just like Stephen King. <laughs> All right. Is that everybody that has rolled a one? I'm glad you guys <clears throat> each getting an encounter. Okay. I think we're getting evidence or rumors. Uh, let me roll one real quick. Sorry. Okay. That's a one. Roll a d20. Well, 12, 19, 19. so um, you search around and you find you absolutely find signs of things and noises. Um, Algar, roll a d6 again. Um, we're kind of doing a, the covering three turns here, so a lot a lot happens in thirty minutes. Two, Two. okay. Um, you find the signs of the kind of mutated and, and wrong guano um, that uh, it looks like those mosquito bats. You fought them before. This um, is the worst. Yeah, there's those things. There's some kind of alien feces slash slime that slid across the floor. So there mm -hmm. are beasts that prowl this cavern. Alien things. The uh, stink slime. Um... Nope, you've never seen anything. Um, I, I feel like Algar has tasted enough and smelt enough and investigated enough weird, icky, smelly, sticky things that I remember this smell. Right? Yeah. I no, hated this smell. So this one is not, you've not seen before, but suffice it to say that there are weird alien things down here that would that you've never seen before. Uh, and then lastly, the other thing is you hear the the familiar noises echoing in the distance of chittering of. <laughs> Dozens of them. Yeah, the goblin, Dozens the of goblin, them. The little goblin men. Yeah. And then, uh, let's see, I see you got a two, and um, as you search, you make it to this bank here uh, in the area that you're searching, you find all of that out, Algar, and then... Um, you hear a skittering, chittering noise um a kind of tinny whining noise of uh, some kind of insectoid thing. Not a spider, but some giant insect. doesn't matter. Um, and um, uh, it's about 50, yard, 50 feet away from you on a mound. And you see that there are several mounds that are sticking up out of the ground. And uh, you see the 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 rubble, the 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 uh, the the pebbles and stone and stuff give way as these things start to move towards you and make it out of the mound. They're coming towards okay. you all. How many? Um, Are we talking like a serried tide, a handful? Good question. Also, EJ has some questions about how long it's been to get here. And, Ooh, good uh, question. Sorry, I'm just trying to like, make sure <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm on the same page. Yeah, totally. Uh, you suspect that there are dozens, more than two dozen. And uh, how long? Yes, uh, we, we sort of abstracted that really fast, AJ. We went through it really fast, but it took a day and a half. So you sailed for a day and um, I'm trying to remember what happened on the first day when you came out here. Or do you mean demon, like, demon encounter? Like, oh, the demon. That's right. And do you mean from Caden's rest to here? Yeah. Ah, yeah, day and a half. So on the first day, okay. toward the evening, you encountered the, the demonic entity uh, that kind of manifested in the overworld. And then gotcha. you camped out, and then that morning you made it to the bridge the next morning, and here you are. Yeah. Gotcha. I thought it took a lot longer than that. Understood. Yeah. Kill books travel really fast as long as they're going downriver. It takes longer to go uphill, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You guys won't have any downtime in case you need it for anything. All right. So, uh, yeah, these things are coming towards you. What do you do? Well, I, I still need to know, like, approximately what size are they? How many are they? Yeah, there's uh, more than two dozen. You think, and they are All right. large. Okay, like large dog, large horse, large dragon. Uh, between horse and dog seems to be what the horrible effects of this place do to creatures between horse and dog I need to pick a creature and Chatlin Pony just feels too disarming 
zebra. That's see, that's no, also that's cute. Big. You know, I don't. You've never met a zebra. That's mountain true. Lion. Good point. <laughs> Zebras are bigger I'll than a mountain lion, though. Bigger than a I'll mountain lion. I'll talk about zebras later. Uh, hippo. Yeah, they're ferocious. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, hippo-sized creatures, probably two dozen of them. What do you all do? Uh, two dozen of them. They're pursuing us. We don't have a good place of retreat. Um, do we have any way of closing off the tunnel? Yeah, we, we can blow through this tunnel. We can destroy the tunnel at any time with the horn of blasting. Though there's a small <laughs> chance that will kill whoever is using the horn. So, uh, I think we should just fight him. Like, you, Chris, are you active? Active? Like, just make sure you were there. Are yep. you? De do you have sleep spun up? I do. Okay, I, I think we can. Take and I have two scrolls of it as well. All right, I think we can put these things down then. Okay, um, let's see. <laughs> let's see. <laughs> let's see. Oh, I love this image. Yeah. All right. Jay says he'll be back in like 30 seconds. That was. I really. Ah, here we are. I need to check the kids' vibes. Oh, okay, good. They're just the giant ants. Jest. <laughs> I was afraid for a second, be like, oh, sorry, two dozen number hulks. And I'd be like, what are you going to do? <laughs> They're coming through the walls. I expect you to die, <laughs> Mr. Joe, Dr. Joe. Yeah. Woot. Okay. Uh, let's see. Ooh, Declare spells. Algar, do this he pleases. Sleep. Okay. All right. In Sticks to snakes. Snakes, very well. Um. Let me know how many... Uh, get there. I'll roll. Are they, are they, well, sorry, I know they're not there yet. And then, um, roll a d6, Algar, please. One sec. Six. We go oh. first. Nice. Yeah, you go first. Uh, if you are firing a missile, go ahead and roll your attacks. If you're moving, move your token. Can they reach us in one turn? <laughs> um, yes. Okay. No, uh, actually, I'll... I'm sorry. No, that's not right. No, they cannot reach you in one turn. That's right. Melee it is. That's right. Uh, rain, sling it is. Very well. Yep. Brian pulls out his short bow and fires two arrows. His target is armor class 16. Ooh, oh my gosh. This Guard is twice will also eight. make two attacks. Uh, 13. No, he doesn't. Even with a plus two, he doesn't have enough. Yeah. Doesn't look like anybody hits. All right. Uh, these things are going to move. They make it about halfway. Um, magic. Makes up here. What? Yeah, I get. The, I get. Uh, hit dice. Real um, quick, if if uh, they made it halfway, we could fire and move back, and that would give us just a mm -hmm. little bit. In more this rule set, down. you can't move specifically uh, okay. to prevent that. Move when you you can move or you can shoot. Gotcha. Like doing one up prevents the other. Gotcha. It's a good idea, but yeah. In BX, you could do that. You just, well, depending on how you interpret it. But, anyways, um, yeah. hit dice. Uh, the largest ones are three, the smaller ones are two. I and will. I guess I'll try for the smaller ones for the moment. <laughs> All right. I don't. Unless you rule I can do both at once, which would be weird. Um. No, let's just... I mean, there's a lot of them, so let's just see how it goes with the smaller ones. Okay. Nine. Two, four, six, eight. So you... All of them but one. And I'm going to just move them to the back. Mm -hmm. What the... <laughs> Excuse me. There we go. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Um, 
Magic. Okay, so let's see. We did magic. Uh, top of the round uh, spells. I have two scrolls of sleep. Two scrolls of sleep. Okay, so you're going to uh, do we'll sleep one. one. Yeah. And you got the snakes. Uh, I forgot to ask, uh, are you moving the snakes, Father Bloombad, closer to them? Yes, I only got two. I got nine total, two poisonous. All right. If you move them, they'll make it just to them. The the ants will make it to the snakes first. Well, then I will hold them back. All right. Then you'll hold them back. Sounds good. They will make it this round. It's like that. Algar will move up behind the snakes, but ahead of the rest of the party. So uh, with uh, gold spear up and ready. Okay. So you're gonna yeah. All right. Uh, and you got Ooh, sleep and a dark spear. Roll a d6 for initiative, Algar. Uh, one. Oof. Okay. They're able to act first. Um, they make it up to you. That's what they do on their turn. Um, you can also fire missiles if anybody's going to fire a missile this round. No. Um, Brian just drops his bow and uh, he's just wearing chain and has a shield and he pulls out his sword. Very standard sword and steps up beside Algar. All right. See so Father Bloombad hits one of them. This is two and three hit dice, you said, right? Yep. Bummer. I think Dark Spear is currently back at the uh, back of the ranch. Yeah, Flanagan has wrapped up Dark Spear, put it under his bed. Later on, we come like, can we pretty please have the big magic spear? And he's like, oh, fine. <laughs> It's going to turn your him. hands weird. You could ask him. 2d6 for the three hit dice ones that are still awake. All righty. Uh, uh, no, I'm sorry. That's somebody else. My bad. That's, that's, that's the damage for the crit that I rolled. Uh, no crit in this game. It's just, uh, it's just, oh, okay. it just automatically hits. Yeah. Sometimes Can I run up? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Can I run up and do melee? Uh, yes, you can move, but we're getting a little bit ahead. Uh, let's let's move back here. So, let's see. You got a one. They move, and then the next thing uh, is uh, missiles. Who fired a missile? Father Blumbed did. All right. Did, and did anybody hit with the missiles? I hit with one. Father, yeah, Father Blumbed hit. Yeah, I'm sorry. Actually, I got the Father Blumbeds for one. And all right, here it is. I see AJ. You. For three damage, the the stats I rolled earlier was like a fifteen deck. So is that like plus two or uh it's it, plus one? Yeah, plus depends. one. Okay. Uh, okay. So fit. Uh, let's see. So you get three damage. All right. So let's see. I don't think there is a plus two for just raw decks in this game. Maybe it like four is max. Okay. All right. And yeah, fighter in order to get huge benefits in order to get huge defensive benefits for high strength and dexterity. Yeah. All right. So, uh, and then anybody having moved and not fired a missile, uh, you've moved your token, uh, and then they've already moved melee combat. Okay. Stab, stab. Yeah. Well, anybody's are, just fighting. He's never are, seen anything are, like this before. Uh, and you ever class those to what again? Oh, I get it. Yeah, I hit one plus 20, so... I do seven damage. Okay. Uh, and what were you going to say, John? Lord Power Beast attacks at one of them. He's sweating. He's got, his adrenaline's just pumping. He's got, like... He's fifth level, but he's never seen shit like this before. <laughs> yeah. He's super scared. He's in a cave. Giant ants. But he's, uh... He's acting tough. What, what were you going to say, John? Oh, uh... Are these are a lot more than I don't know. These are a few hit dice, and I was, so I was wondering if you um, get to attack more than one round. Oh yeah, not not on these. Yeah, good good point. Okay, yeah, okay. I going? I guess I fumbled my warhammer here in my uh, excitement. Gotcha, uh, Father Bloombad. Uh, are you attacking with any of your snakes? Yeah, the uh, the poisonous ones are gonna attack, and the other ones are gonna like uh, huddle around those ones to uh, oh. you know keep them alive as much as possible. So there'll be two attacking, two separate targets with the seven divided amongst them, trying to protect them. Oh, nice! There you go. Two saves. 
I can imagine Brian One notices fails. that you double your Warhammer and steps in front. Pick it up, quick! And helps out with uh, with your whatever John your character's name is. Oh, Ulfkill. Ulfkill. All right, uh, and then magic. All right, <clears throat> this is one d six for the three hit dice ones here. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! All right, so there's one, and then uh, top of the round spells. Magic missile. Magic missile. Okay, and then roll a d six Algar. Ah, it's house initiative. wins. Yeah, you're able to uh, act first. Um, if you are moving, move your token. Move your token. If you are firing a missile, go ahead and make your attack. Hey, Ross, that one ant near my guy it has a red dot. Does that mean something? Injured. Yeah, he's, he's been injured. Okay. Nice. And by the way, you have Lockin's counter here, but he's still laid up from yeah. being raised. So. Sorry about that. All right, so let's see. Uh, AJ, you got seven total. Which one are you targeting? Um, I'm going to target the northernmost one, the topmost one, so we could try to open up, so we can maybe try to start circling them. Okay. All right, and uh, let's see. That's missiles, and then they swarm around basically anyone they can get to. Oh, I was narratively near John, so I think I should be down there. Sorry, I'm going to move me um, down here. Uh, and I think I would be in the center, honestly, like there. Sorry about that. All right. Okay. Uh, and then we're at, let's see, melee combat. All righty, here we go. Bring Jeez. it. I've got so many hit points for now. <laughs> this is what, what are we calling something in sixteen? Did you 16, say sixteen? Yeah. I missed. Any other melee attacks, Algar? Oh, sorry. One, one step. And then the snakes With. again. One of them. Nice. Okay, let me see if anybody fails. Uh, oh, it almost landed on one. It passed. Oh no! All right, everybody missed. All right, the the ants are going to attack. Two of them are going to attack Algar. Oh wait, magic. That's Hold right. On, Thank no. you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's are, are twelve you... damage overall. So if these things look big and tough, I, I would, you know, well, I guess yeah. I'd try to finish off uh, the one that's been wounded or something. Yeah, they do look big and tough. You do that, um, you're able just to finish one of them off. And uh, let's see, um, two of them. One of them's going to attack Algar. So you save Algar from one of them. Uh, does a seventeen hit? It will. All right. Uh, let's see. Make a save versus poison. Oops. Oh my this god! Is, this is the wrong one. Sorry. Oh. oh. This better be a damage you poison, not a kill you instantly poison. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, did you fail? I did. Rolled a seven. All right, so your total damage is four plus ten, 10 points of damage. This thing Oof. latches into you, and you can feel the venom course through you. It feels like electrical fire in your veins. Uh, Father Bloombad. Let's see. That hits. Make a save, Father Bloombad. <coughs> nice. You instead only take... Four plus three, seven points of damage. And uh, let's see, these two are going to attack snakes. Mm, hits and nine plus three hits. So uh, two of your snakes are dead, two of the non poisonous ones. Um, and two more are going to, let's see, attack snakes. And they both hit. So four total non-lethal snakes are dead. 
and then one of them's going to attack Brian. It hits. Make a save, Brian. Okay. Pass. 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 Uh, Brian, you take... Oof. Seven points of damage. Oh, the bite's burn. And... Um, uh, John, uh, let's see. Make a save. Well, actually, what's your armor class uh, for your character? So with pl plate and shield, does that make it a 17... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because my dex is normal. So. Okay, yeah, yeah, in that case, no, you don't have to make a save. Yeah, with your plate and your shield, this thing latches onto your plate, and and uh, you start pummeling it with your shield to get it off and everything. Uh, and that's the that's its round, uh, Declare Spells. I think last round, Brian, his, his, his sword bounced off of the back of one. Everyone, watch out. Their carapace is as strong as a shield. And then he's like, oh, and he's like, snakes. And he's, uh, he kicks at one of the snakes that's beside him. Watch out. And, and then, because uh, he just never, doesn't know what's going on behind him. And then he's like, they're attacking the ants. He's just sort of shouting out loud. So everybody's so everybody's aware of kind of like the, uh, the situation, I think. Yeah. Nice. Uh, magic missile. <laughs> magic missile. All right. Uh, roll a d6, Algar. Okay. Six. We go All first. Right. Yes. Um, top of the round, uh, fire missiles if anybody's... Now, at this point, if you fire a missile, you have a chance of hitting one of your allies. Uh... And then uh, I'll drop bow and draw sword. All right. Uh, move your token if you're moving. And... Uh, let's see, they are not able to move, and they're not going to fire a missile, so the next thing is melee. Go ahead and make your melee attacks. Stab, stab, stab. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Pretty bad. <clears throat> no. All right. Nice. Oh, no. One point of damage. <laughs> nice. Wait. Okay. Oh. Is that two attacks for Father Bloombad? That's for the snakes. Ah, that's for the snakes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so those hit, and they're the poisonous ones, so I'll save. Failed on one of them, and so that kills one of them. Let's see, and magic missile, let's see, eight... You're able to take out this weak one if you target that one. All right. Let's it's see. 11 damage overall, actually. But, yeah. I, I would like to kill one. <laughs> uh, well, if you're... Like, if uh, I you don't want to go for... I don't want to go for the... This one's oh, the little ones. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Take out the big ones. All right. Let's see. So, uh, that's magic and... Melee, that's their turn. This one's going to attack Algar. You see 15? 15, it fails. Uh, not in the one, you're not. This one's going to attack Father Bloombed. It also misses. This one's going to attack a snake. It also misses. Two attacks on snakes. Hits. <coughs> and hits. So you lose two more non-poisonous snakes. And then... This one's going to attack Brian. Not a chance. Um, it hits. Okay. Uh, I failed my save this time. Oh, you failed your save? Yeah. Okay, you take... Uh, 14 damage. Ooh. Ouch. Oh. And yeah, he's one. grimacing out. He's quiet. And uh, Flanagan will be dead. Not Brian, though. Nice. Rolled high. All right. Uh, this one's for John's character. Uh, it, let's see, does an 18 hit? I believe yeah. so. All right. Make a save. Mm. Uh, oof. That, that, I don't think that meets your save number, so... Seven plus two, you take nine points of damage. Okay, oh, no. I'm 
I'm okay. Yeah. Okay. You got those big hit points. Okay. Top of the round spells. Web. Web. Okay. Uh, I think you're gonna like web your friends, but maybe that doesn't matter. Uh, well, I should be able to construct the web in such a way that I might be able to web <laughs> it's a like snake. All amongst it's funny, them. but I know. But well, all right, yeah. It's okay if you d do what you got. Yeah. All right. No arrows, obviously. So uh, D6 Algar. Alrighty. Four. And all right, melee attacks. Is there uh, any bonus for like flanking from opposite sides in the, in this? Yes, actually, you oh, get a right, uh, there is. yeah. If you're not a thief, it's a plus two to hit. All right, the uh, random guard will move to the other side of the one between him and Elgar. Okay. Brian's sword is just bouncing off of the backs of these things. Tanky. Not from the combat. Should have Not brought a war pick. Yet. Yeah. All right. One Easy of them dies to one of the snakes. <coughs> All right. Um, these things are not going to make a morale check. They're just really angry and scared. They're going to fight to the death. I mean, actually, so you got the one one snake hit, right? Uh, yeah, one snake hit, and it failed the the save, and it's dead. All right, let's see. I think that's everybody, and then magic. All right. Um, I would like to cover this area here. Okay. Twenty feet long, ten foot wide, and uh, hopefully it'll suspend them enough that they can't just start killing Rumple. Sure. Or not Rumple. Uh, yeah. Gun. No, it it does. Uh, the downside is that it does also web. Um, John's character and Brian but you do that oh. and then one of them is left it's going to make an attack on other Bloombad it Brian is misses. just screaming now he's I'm caught in a web right. this snake's an actor on me help help let's go ahead and resolve our attacks uh, chuck a d6 Algar and then everybody make your melee attacks actually just make your melee attacks I feel bad only it had webbed his mouth if only <laughs> Yeah, here we go. Nice. I guess I can't attack now because I'm in this thing, in this web, right? Yeah, but they can't attack you either. Oh, My arm I, is stuck. <laughs> I can't attack now because I'm in this web. Dang it! It looks like only one hits. I won't do that all the time, guys. Please do. <laughs> He'll Great. change over time. Well, uh, the flanking would bring that 12 to a 16. Uh. Right. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I missed the uh, plus. It's plus two. Plus two. Okay. And then uh, if you're a fighter, you can add, I think, your strength bonus, which is, I think, uh, are you a fighter? Uh, the the guard is, yes, I think so. Or I think, it, I don't know. All right. You need I to roll, have a 16 I roll, strength. I rolled, I rolled, I rolled 11, 11 strength and 15 dex, so oh. I figured it would probably be a thief. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Well, that'll uh, that'll help your parry as a fighter. But 15 dex, yeah, that gives you a plus one to All right. AC functionally. All right. It uh, That misses. I think I already rolled. I uh, lost track of it. No, I did not roll. Go ahead and roll your attacks again. Alrighty. Chuck him. Let's go. Yeah. Miss. Oh, this this oh, I can't do anything. I forgot. All right. There we go. Father Balloon Bed finishes it off. Um, and you all have managed to survive. Um, you made it into the mouth of this cave, and uh, after about 30 minutes of searching and gaining signs of what you might face down here, these things have erupted from the silt and the stone. And uh, you slew, you know, two dozen of them, nearly. And um, you make it back to the kill boat, and you sail uh, for several days. It takes you all of that time. So it's been two weeks total by the time you make it back at the end of your adventure this time to, uh, to Caden's Rest, where you have uh, earned some respite at the tavern. And that Ooh. ends our adventure for the night.
Also, what a 